Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and what you're looking at right here is a recently created, very detailed x-ray map of the entire night skies, the map that hasn't been updated for many many years. And today I wanted to talk about what the scientists from Germany and Russia were able to create in the last 6 or so months, and why it's sort of important. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So I think most of you are probably familiar with something like this. This is what you would see in visual light if you were to look at the night skies. This is basically the Milky Way itself and all of the stars in the vicinity. But when it comes to science, and I guess when it comes to astronomy specifically, there are other wavelengths you can actually look at and see something completely different. Here is what all of this would look like if you were to look at it in the infrared which is basically the type of light mostly emitted by smaller stars like the red dwarfs and stars that are very very common in the galaxy. And even though infrared is pretty common, it's usually produced by much lower in energy objects. While at the same time it's also pretty much produced by a lot of planets, a lot of planets do emit infrared, and also us. Right now you and I are actually emitting infrared light as well. If you keep going down in frequency, eventually you'll reach microwave light, and this is what you start seeing. Microwave light is just a little bit more energetic than radio waves, and it does have quite a lot of new things that you'll discover in these particular frequencies. And then we reach the new version of the galaxy in radio waves. Radio waves will show us a lot of other stuff, like for example, this right here that was not visible to us in any other light, this is Centaurus A galaxy, that has recently been mentioned in another video because we discovered something really cool about it. And as you can see, Milky Way itself doesn't even look the same um, either. So in radio waves you can also discover a lot of new stuff, a lot of very powerful galaxies and a lot of really interesting things like pulsars. But if you were to look at much higher energies, even higher than the ones we can receive with our own eyes, such as for example gamma rays and x-rays, you're going to see a very different universe. And here's what we used to think of the universe in the x-rays. It suddenly transforms quite dramatically. Everything becomes relatively bright, and there seem to be a lot of emissions coming from many different regions. So the X-ray map is one of the richer maps we can create using various telescopes, but there is however a problem. X-rays don't really penetrate the atmosphere of our planet, and so any telescopes located on Earth will not be able to create an X-ray map at all. We had to use telescopes located in space for us to be able to see anything in this particular frequency. And the last attempts to do this were back in 1990s. This is actually a really, really old map that you're looking at. And so for many years, scientists have been trying to find a new way to look at the night skies in the X-rays. Mostly because some of the more fascinating objects like neutron stars, black holes, or even quasars can really be only seen in X-ray radiation to their full extent. They don't unfortunately produce as much interesting uh, information in other frequencies, including of course visual light. So X-ray observations have always been really fascinating to scientists, but we've always lacked telescopes to try to create better and bigger pictures. And back in 1980s, uh, to basically create a kind of a very large scientific collaboration, countries um, in Europe decided to cooperate with USSR to try to create a very very large and very powerful X-ray telescope in order to create the most detailed X-ray map of the night skies. Well, unfortunately, USSR fell apart, Roscosmos lost a lot of its funding, and the mission did not really happen for a very long time. But it didn't disappear. It just transformed into something a little bit smaller, and the collaboration was now between Russia and Germany. They created this beautiful telescope known as Spectre RG, with RG representing the frequencies it's able to observe, specifically X-ray and gamma ray frequencies. And to some extent it was also compared to the famous Hubble telescope, except that it's in X-ray frequencies. And this telescope was actually only launched last year, in 2019, and it took it a few months to get to its location where it's going to spend at least 6 years observing the night skies. It's going to be orbiting in a very special region of the orbital space, known as the Lagrange point, and in this case it's the L2 point that you can see right here. So it's not really orbiting Earth, it's not really orbiting the Sun, it's orbiting both at the same time. The L2 point is located about 1.5 million kilometers, or about a million miles away from Earth itself, and it represents a very interesting stable point of orbit where a spacecraft can basically just hover in that one spot and stay there for a very long time and not be disturbed by anything else. 
A lot of spacecrafts have previously used this point for orbits, and in this case, the mission here will be doing this, as you can see in the simulation. It will be sort of spinning around this invisible L2 point and stay in the same spot for about six and a half years. The point of the mission is pretty simple. It's using two telescopes, the slightly smaller Russian telescope that's able to observe X-ray uh, frequency as well, and the slightly bigger Erosita uh, German telescope that has just released its data and created its first map. The way that it does this is essentially by spinning around its orbit and creating these tiny tiny slices of night skies. And eventually, after six months, it completes the entire night skies, creating the first map. But it's going to do this several times, at least six more times. And the first such cycle was just completed, so we finally have our first map ready. And as you can imagine, a lot of astronomers are super excited about the data already, mostly because it discovered over a million new objects in the night skies. The vast majority of all of these new objects are exceptionally powerful active galactic nuclei of different galaxies, essentially supermassive and ultramassive black holes that are emitting so much very powerful energy that it can be seen from anywhere in the universe. The vast majority of all of the new objects discovered, 77% of all of them were such objects. Basically, if you were to look at the night skies in the X-rays, pretty much most of the bright points you would see in the night skies would be super and ultramassive black holes really, really far away. So unlike visible light, where you mostly see just stars as the points in the night skies, the X-ray emissions would show you something that you've never seen before. These invisible dark giants emitting powerful jets of energy pointed right at us. The other 2% of all of the discoveries here are the really massive and really large structures known as superclusters. These very large clusters are normally formed when galaxies come really close together and start forming these very large shapes. Some may only contain dozens of galaxies, but some contain hundreds or even thousands. And as they start interacting with one another, there's a lot of energy that's being created and a lot of it is visible from really far away. And this is exactly what the scientists were able to discover, but only about 2% of all new discoveries were these superclusters. Interestingly, the other 20% were these extremely, extremely powerful stars with very powerful corona, solar corona. A lot of them are just really giant stars that emit a lot of energy, and a lot of this energy seems to be in X-rays. These stars are normally much, much more massive than the Sun, and also often don't really live very long. So after a few million years, they'll all go supernova. But they do seem to represent about 20% of new discoveries, suggesting that there are a lot of them out there. And a lot of them we've never even seen before because of the new uh, discoveries from this particular mission. And the last 1% is made up of other smaller objects, such as, for example, the X-ray binaries, where there's usually a neutron star or a black hole orbiting around a much larger star, various types of supernova remnants, and also emissions of extremely powerful solar flares that were happening just at the right time. A lot of these solar flares can be extremely powerful as well and often do produce X-ray radiation, and some of them do happen around much smaller stars, such as red dwarfs that are everywhere in the galaxy. At the same time, this allowed us to see the X-ray map of our own galaxy much, much better, and we now have a much better map of various types of hot gas in the Milky Way and all of the stuff that surrounds us as well including, as you can see right here, a much better picture of the really famous Fermi bubbles that we've talked about in many previous videos. And because this observatory is going to be completing seven more of these surveys, we're going to have a much deeper, much more detailed map in about six years from now. So all of this is going to be really exciting for the X-ray astronomers and for a lot of other studies that do involve this really high energy astronomy that often deals with objects like black holes, objects like quasars, and a lot of other really powerful events. And honestly, imagine what we're going to be seeing in about six years. This is a map from 1990s. This is a map that we just created after only six months. Six years later, this will transform a lot. It will be much more detailed, it will have many more, millions more objects, and we're probably going to discover a lot more mysteries about the universe that we currently can't even imagine. This will allow us to see a lot of really rare, very exotic phenomena that are impossible to see from the surface of the planet. 
and we might even be able to see a lot of events happening in real time. For example, we might get lucky and see an actual black hole or neutron star collision happening in real time and detect all of the X-ray radiation coming from these events as well. And the second survey is only a few months away. Uh, it's going to be completed by the end of 2020 and we're going to improve this map even more as the time goes by. So this is a pretty exciting mission, it's definitely something that a lot of astronomers are looking forward to, simply because it's finally going to cover all of these gaps of the X-ray night skies that has actually not been improved for many many years. And so in that sense, it's one of the more exciting but I guess more unknown missions out there. It's going to help us understand a lot of mysteries about the universe and help us discover new phenomena we can't even imagine yet. But I guess until we discover more or until the new map comes out, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out some of the links I posted in the description for more information about this mission and also subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon or maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.